Good morning. This is Earthy Love Medicine, and I am on day seven of my juice feast. Um, I've been recording my videos in the evening time just to show everybody like how I've been feeling at the end of the day, but I'm going to show you this morning because I'm making my juice, and I kind of just wanted to include you in that. So I'm going to finish prepping everything, and I'll be right back. Now we're prepped and ready to go. We're going to fill up this machine here. Let's get this open. I guess I should have had this part ready if I'm prepped and ready to go, right? So these are Power Greens. I buy these at Costco. I get them for like five bucks for this big old thing, and I usually use it twice if I'm um, like just juicing singles. But if I am juicing more in bulk, then it usually takes me like a whole bag to do bulk. But I usually will get like four, three to four 32 ounce. Um, glasses of it so you know we're gonna do this I'm gonna do a little bulking today so you'll see me whip out the, another bag and start filling this guy but oh see I didn't fully prep it I didn't cut these things up hold on a sec let's try again so now I'm gonna put some heavy stuff on the top just to help push it in there see so put some cucumbers and then I'm gonna close it and get started on the juice now, y'all, this juicing is saving my life. Um, so, I feel a little, um, a little sad this morning. Um, like I was saying in my day, what was it, my day six video, um, you know, this really makes you realize how much your your stomach, your body, like how much it really affects your mental health. And I'm realizing how um, this has been affecting me for years. And that realization has just opened up like a whole conversation in my mind of like all the things that have been neglected. And, you know, not that I didn't know that those things were being neglected, but <clears throat> excuse me. The part that's really hard is um, realizing that it was because of my health that I was neglecting those things. I just thought I was a big, lazy pile of crap, and it was really disheartening for me. Um, and I really struggled with self-hatred and shame from not um, doing a lot of the stuff that I needed to do. Now, you know, I built a business in the last couple years and I had to pull back on that business. So yes, I was doing stuff, but there's so many things, especially like just normal self-care and um, my home, you know, keeping my home clean and then letting it get ridiculous and then keeping it clean and then letting it get ridiculous. And it's like, um, you know, I have shame around those things. I was raised to always keep a really nice house and to be clean and, you know, I just, I was raised a certain way. And so I've, I, you know, some, most of that was right, to be honest, you know, keeping my house clean and, um, is definitely a mental health issue for me. And I look around me and I been looking around me and I can see how unorganized and how sporadic everything is and how, you know, I have areas that are clean and areas that are disorganized. So, I mean, it literally reminds me of my current mental and emotional state is that some places I feel okay inside and then other places just feel chaotic and feel messy. And um, going through this process of being aware of myself and being aware of my own needs um, is definitely... Uh, bringing up a lot of emotion around the areas where I am kind of a mess and, you know, things are not the way that I want them to be. So I'm struggling here. I know I'm not saying anything really quickly. I'm really in like an internal state. So it's difficult to verbalize the stuff that I have going on in my mind and in my heart. It's like I'm coming from a place of not beating myself up anymore because I've, you know, I've been beating myself up forever. I'm pretty much like done with that part. 
Um, this is more about personal accountability and acknowledging that part of taking my health back is like, you know, not part of taking my health back is like taking my life back because I have felt like a stranger in my own life for a long time now. And I've wanted things to be a certain way as far as like, okay, so what I mean by be a certain way is I want to be organized and have a schedule and, you know, and I've haven't always been the most organized and the most scheduled person, but in the past I was a lot, lot better than I am right now. And I have felt lost in my life, not knowing what I'm doing. You know, I started a business and then realized like I started to achieve things that meant something to me. And I started to realize once I started to achieve things and feel successful that I still felt really empty and none of it was very fulfilling and it just it became a life that I didn't want because now I had all I had more responsibilities and more things that were you know calling me to um do you know that that were on my plate basically and I uh I was crumbling because as a person, I just didn't feel whole in any of that. So I, uh, I pulled back on the business that I had started and I dropped some of my properties and I've been focusing on myself pretty much for like, like 10 months now, about seven, nine or 10 months now since basically, uh, April, May, of last year from my I went to that bit I went on a business trip to Florida if you've been listening to my videos then you know that and um, since then during then and since then it has been um, a long road and I've cried a lot and I've been angry a lot and um, I've cycled through a lot of emotions and um, I'm very grateful very very grateful for the fact that I'm going to open up another bag here and add some more. Hold on a second. Okay, got some more. So I'm really grateful that I've had the space. And, you know, me and my husband, we have been going through it. Our relationship has just been turmoil for so long now. And we're finally pulling out of that, which is wonderful. And I'm very happy about um, because the stress of us not doing well was really taking a toll on me because I was really in a place of trying to fix myself and work on myself. And, you know, our relationship problems actually were a catalyst for me to see where I'm, you know, I'm unhappy and where I'm not doing well. And I think I was just kind of sleepwalking through life, telling myself that I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. Everything's okay. And oh, for a second, I thought that I stopped the video. Um, so, uh, you know, sometimes things happen in our life that we think is like the worst thing that ever happened. And it ends up being one of the best things that ever happened to us. And that's kind of what happened with me is that um, something happened that was between me and my husband um, that was a violation to me. Um, you know, trust is a really big deal to me. And he, he wasn't honest with me about something. And, um, I had to hear about it from somebody else and they kind of used it as a weapon to hurt me. And I stuck up for him and was like, you know, we're not even in that place. That's not who we are. My husband would never lie to me, especially over something stupid. And he did. And it was very embarrassing to have somebody else, you know, here I am thinking I'm in this like beautiful relationship where me and my husband have gotten our relationship back and we're in this great place of honesty and love and compassion and we really that's where I thought we were and um his it was you know it was around his addiction to cigarettes and um he had quit smoking um a year and a half before but this summer it'll be three years so you know he's still going strong um but he had been sneaking cigarettes and um which you know I totally understand and everything that happened I totally got and was okay with like I get that you know we're gonna struggle and we're gonna backslide and we're gonna you know we're gonna fuck up basically 
and he was failing himself more than he was failing me. But, you know, the part was, is that I thought we were in this really great place where he would have shared that with me and he didn't. He was including, you know, other people, you know, someone else into it. It was, you know, one of our older children and their, their insignificant other. I don't really like the person. Um, they're not very nice. Um, and they got off on our pain, which was really shitty. Um, so anyways, that event, it like, it was a catalyst for me to wake the fuck up and realize that I was sleepwalking through my life. And it has been literally one of the most painful things that I've ever gone through in my life because it really, it made me have to like, take a look at myself and go, okay, so you know, I love this person. I'm trying to be with them for the rest of my life, but who I, who am I without them? You know, and we battled and battled and battled for up until not that long ago. So, um, I, uh, you know, we're in a good place now, but we went through hell to get where we are right now. Um, and I went through hell. I was angry at him, very, very angry at him. And um, it. now if you don't like hearing about personal business and stuff like that, that's, you know, I'm not the channel for you, but I'm telling all of this because I wanna relate and show people that like there are things that happen to us or happen in our lives that are out of our control and that we can, you know, sit in our spilled milk and be angry and feel these feelings or we can do something about it. And I promise you, I sat in it. I sat on it for a while, y'all, um, because it was a direct reflection of like everything that I needed to work on within myself. And I, I realized that, you know, I created a false narrative in my mind of what we were and who we were in my mind. I'm healthy, you know, and I think that, you know, because you got to understand the way I see things and the way I'm actually doing things, they're different. You know, I see things like, you know, we've been lied to and we live in corruption, but I'm still a part of this matrix. I still buy stuff at the store and I haven't grown a garden. I live in the ghetto. So I have a house with a yard, but it's not motivating living in the ghetto and putting out a garden. I'm not going to lie to you. So there's just ways where, you know, and personal accountability around eating and like, you know, I'm a vegan, but sometimes I'm a fast food vegan or like, you know, having boundaries, but never really having full boundaries. So yes, I'm strong. And yes, I make these, these decisions for myself that are healthy, but I also compromise on it, you know, and that's where it's like, okay, but this is about me getting my health back. So if I'm getting my health back, then why am I compromising with myself? And so it got me to realize that I've spent a lifetime of like, you know, letting myself down and not following through. And, you know, some of that I realize now. Hold on a sec. Uh, I was getting a call, but I, I canceled it so I could finish this. Um, so I realize now that oh, I don't even know what I was saying. The call distracted me. Um, Oh, I realize now that a lot of that was, um, health. It was from my declining health from, um, having an autoimmune problem. So, you know, my lack for light, my lack of luster for life, like, you know, who doesn't want to be excited about life? Honestly, like all of us, we think that we're like, Oh, fuck everybody. Fuck everything. Cause that's the society we're in right now. But I promise nobody really likes feeling like that all the time. I don't give a fuck who you are. You don't like it. I don't, I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to hate everybody every time I leave my house. Like, who wants to be that person, you know? And life has really um, taken a toll on me and made me really, like, pessimistic and a people hater. And, you know, I just... Tired of that. Tired of that life. 